North Korea fires a ballistic missile over Japan, prompting the government to issue a rare warning for people to take shelter. Scientists call for talks after a confrontation at sea between Taiwan and Japan, why a negotiated solution is not as easy as it seems. House prices hit historic highs, with the port city of Kaohsiung leading the way. Plus, four legs good, two legs bad. Why Taiwanese are choosing pets over children. A warm welcome to Taiwan Plus News. I'm Ian Kavat. North Korea has fired a ballistic missile over Japan for the first time since 2017, forcing Japan's government to issue a warning for citizens to take cover. It's the fifth launch from North Korea in 10 days and comes a week after Japan, South Korea and the U.S. conducted anti-submarine exercises in the region. James Chater reports. Mobile images capture a Japanese train coming to a stop as an announcement is made of a North Korean missile being fired over the country. On social media, purported footage of alarms blaring in Japanese cities. This was the alert that flashed on Japanese TV screens, telling residents in the country's northeast to take cover after Pyongyang launched its first missile over Japan in five years. North Korea's intermediate-range ballistic missile, its fifth launch in 10 days, was fired from the country's Jiagong region. It flew 4,600 kilometers, reaching an altitude of 1,000 kilometers, before landing in waters east of Japan. Senior Japanese politicians, including Prime Minister Fumio Kishida and his chief cabinet secretary, have condemned Pyongyang's actions as barbaric. <laughs> Pyongyang's longest missile launch yet comes just a week after Japan, South Korea and the United States conducted anti-submarine exercises in waters east of the Korean Peninsula, the first such drills in five years. It's a response to the growing threat from North Korean missiles launched from submarines, which they tested as recently as May this year. Since assuming office this year, South Korean President Yoon suk yeol has taken a harder line on his northern neighbor, which some analysts believe is preparing for a nuclear weapons test later this year. Yoon has vowed to strengthen the country's security alliance with the U.S. South Korea, the U.S. and Taiwan have all condemned the latest launch. I don't Pyongyang's missile launch over Japan marks a troubling milestone of its recent tests. But with the pariah state showing little appetite for dialogue with the international community, the fear is this type of launch won't be the last. Karma Xu and James Chater for Taiwan Plus. Taiwan's military intelligence agency says it will invest heavily in updating its shortwave radio capabilities. Officials say that this is part of an effort to fight back against China's grey zone tactics and psychological warfare. Shortwave signals from China's central broadcasting station can reach across much of Taiwan, transmitting Beijing's propaganda. By updating the equipment, Taiwan hopes to counter Chinese messaging with its own broadcasts at home, broadcasts that can also reach most of China. Military officials say that the newly updated equipment will be brought online next year. Scientists are calling for Taiwan and Japan to reach an agreement on the right to do research in waters both claim as part of their exclusive economic zones. That comes after a standoff in the disputed waters late last month. John Van Trieste has the story. A confrontation at sea. 
On September 29th, a Taiwanese research vessel entered disputed waters off Taiwan's east coast and was stopped by a Japanese Coast Guard ship. Taiwan then sent its own Coast Guard vessel to the scene. But like Taiwan, Japan says the waters are part of its Exclusive Economic Zone, or EEZ, meaning it controls who conducts research there. The standoff lasted 10 hours until the Taiwanese research vessel left the area. Now, Taiwanese scientists are hoping to overcome the impasse, even though some say direct talks may not be possible. The One China Principle means Japan cannot recognize Taiwan's sovereignty claims separately from Beijing's, which also claims Taiwan and its surrounding waters as its own. But researchers hope that Japan and Taiwan can at least reach a temporary agreement on scientific research to avoid another confrontation in this contested zone. Alex Chen and John Van Trieste for Taiwan Plus. The number of reported human trafficking cases has fallen sharply. Over the summer, thousands of Taiwanese fell victim to job scams in Cambodia. They were promised high wages and good benefits. But once they arrived, they were forced to work in fraud schemes. The government says public information campaigns and widespread media coverage has helped raise awareness about the issue. Two hundred and eighty five Taiwan nationals have been rescued from Cambodia and brought back home, although there are still some four thousand six hundred Taiwanese who traveled to the country this year and have yet to return. Rescue efforts are hampered by the fact that Taiwan does not have a representative office in Cambodia. Taiwan's national home price index has logged historic new highs this quarter, with the biggest increases in the country's south. Ryan Hokopatrick has the details. House prices are shooting up, and it's the biggest year-on-year -year rise in Taiwan's history. Across the country, property costs are up over 10 percent from this time last year. That's according to second quarter data just released by the Interior Ministry. At nearly 14 percent, the biggest jump was logged in the southern port city of Kaohsiung. To explain this leap in Kaohsiung, industry experts point to a series of science parks recently established in the city. Historically known as a shipping and industrial hub, the parks are creating higher-end jobs and carving out a new niche in the local economy. Even chip-making titan TSMC is moving in. But experts say this is a mixed blessing for residents. Across all six major metropolitan areas of Taiwan, homes are getting increasingly unaffordable. Unlike previous rounds of real estate speculation that were confined to Greater Taipei, this surge is going nationwide, along with calls for the government to take action. Ryan Hill Kilpatrick for Taiwan Plus. Now, Taichung is one of Taiwan's most popular cities. In its efforts to build a metro service, the city has lost a lot of money. Now, public transit experts are recommending ways of turning the deficit around. John Van Trieste reports. Just one and a half years after opening, the metro in the central city of Taichung is in a financial crunch. Early in the year, the metro company predicted daily ridership of around 54,000. But as of August, just 26,000 take the metro each day. By the end of next year, just around 18 million U.S. dollars of the metro's 110 million U.S. dollar capital will be left. A key problem is the fact that only one line is open so far. 
and plans for a second are under government review, mired in political wrangling. For now, the plan is to inject more money into the metro company. But public transport scholars have other suggestions. They say the city should consider adjusting policies that offer free bus rides of up to 10 kilometers and cap fares beyond that at around 30 U.S. cents. They also say teaming up with businesses through joint development projects around the metro could help. For now, the city government continues to hope it can convince its nearly 3 million residents to give the new metro a chance. Andy Xue and John Van Trieste for Taiwan Plus. As birth rates decline in Taiwan, the country is facing an aging population crisis. But as Rick Glout reports, people are still growing their families in a different way. People in Taipei take their pets with them everywhere they go. You'll see them in cafes, on the metro, on hiking trails, and of course, in the city's parks. Statistics show it's a trend that's only set to grow. For the first time ever, the number of new cats and dogs being registered in the country is outpacing the number of babies being born. In the first nine months of the year, more than 175,000 new pets were registered in Taiwan. The total number of babies born this year is expected to be less than 140,000. Taiwan's birth rate is one of the lowest in the world, creating an aging population crisis. By 2025, one fifth of Taiwanese will be over 65, putting a strain on the workforce, the healthcare system, and even the country's military. Experts say rising costs of living, particularly sky high house prices, and more women heading to work are behind the decline. Despite government subsidies to marry and have kids, it is four legged friends that are rising in popularity. With a human population of 24 million, Taiwan is now home to 2 million registered pets, raising questions about what role these furry friends who don't go to work or pay taxes are going to play in the country's future. Damon Lin and Rick Glowett in New Taipei City for Taiwan Plus. Taiwanese animal lovers are celebrating World Animal Day, an international day to advocate for the rights and welfare of animals. Events in Taiwan saw vets offer free checkups for pets, while activists encourage responsible pet ownership, as well as adopting pets instead of buying them. Taiwan has laws protecting animal rights, but some activists say the country could do better. 其实在2017年的时候，我们就已经实施零安乐，但是现在呃相关的配套并没有做好，所以各地的收容所其实是暴龙的。Coming up here on Taiwan Plus, the definition of a COVID reinfection is being changed. We'll explain why after the break. Welcome back. You're watching Taiwan Plus News. 
Taiwan reported more than 49,000 cases of COVID-19 on Tuesday. The Central Epidemic Command Center says that it's changing the definition of a COVID-19 reinfection with borders set to open later this month. As Jaime Ocon explains, the government is hoping this will help contain the spread of infections. Taiwan is still reporting tens of thousands of COVID-19 cases every day. The latest wave of infections is fueled by the BA5 Omicron variant and officials say that it could soon be the dominant strain. Taiwan's Epidemic Command Center says that in order to more accurately report cases, the definition for reinfections needs to be changed. Previously, a reinfection was counted within one to three months of the original infection or positive test. Now, that has been amended to 14 days. If a patient is reinfected, they will have to undergo a 7 plus 7 policy, which means seven days of quarantine at home and seven days of monitoring COVID symptoms. Officials say that this could help to diagnose cases quickly and lead to faster treatment. Health officials are also warning the public of the upcoming flu season, which they say might increase the spread of transmission and could also arrive earlier than expected. 台湾大概十一月就开始有一些流感高峰期，但是今年看起来是比较，感觉上是比较早一点发现。After more than two years, Taiwan is set to open its borders in mid-October. The latest directive from the government is seen as an effort to manage COVID while also living with the virus. Alex Chen and Hami Okan for Taiwan Plus. An unexploded mortar shell has been found on a beach in Taiwan's outlying county of Ponghu. The military says the artillery shell may be a remnant of previous military exercises. Officials say that this area of the beach had not been used for exercises in the past 10 years. A bomb squad carefully removed the shell, although experts say the severely corroded munition may not have been capable of exploding. Apple has revealed that more Taiwanese companies are now its official suppliers. In its latest suppliers list, the tech giant registered three more Taiwan firms dealing with injection molding, liquid crystal displays and surface mount technologies. They join companies like manufacturing giant Foxconn and chip industry leader TSMC, which have been long-time suppliers for the American corporation. Taiwan's science budget is set to get its largest ever increase next year. The 13.8% boost will bring the budget to more than 4 billion US dollars. The minister of the newly formed National Science and Technology Council, Wu Zhengzhong, says that while its science budget is smaller than those of other developed countries, Taiwan is still able to excel due to its abundance of talent and speedy cooperation between different government agencies. The increased budget will support advances in aerospace technology and help Taiwan achieve its goal of net zero emissions by 2050. Some candidates for Taiwan's upcoming local elections have got into trouble for giving supporters gifts that push the limits of vote buying. There's a cap on just how much candidates can spend on these freebies, and there are now calls for that cap to be raised. Eric Gao explains. Gifts like these are a normal part of Taiwan's election culture. Candidates hand out small items to supporters or treat them to small meals with reminders to vote for them come election day. But there are limits. To avoid implications of vote buying, the value of each item is capped at about one U.S. dollar, and this limit is taken seriously. Township mayor candidates in the northern counties of Ilan and Shinzu were recently investigated for vote buying in connection with gifts like these. Authorities have received hundreds of similar reports. The $1 limit has been in place since 2001. 
But with inflation on the rise ahead of this year's polls, there are now calls for that ceiling to be lifted. 有人会担心，这个碗不要太大碗，太大碗要是面太多，超过三十块钱，到时候被人家检举。这个是很简易的话，当然没有问题了。但是如果你弄得很澎湃啊，又好像半桌一样的，那就不恰当。The idea has crossed party support. 其实我觉得真的也是可以改变一些了，也让执法单位比较简单。The issue will be discussed by Taiwan's Supreme Prosecutor's Office, with an answer expected within a week. As Naya Zhou and Eric Gao. For Taiwan Plus. Taiwan is set to ban people from raising its indigenous monkeys as pets. Formosan macaque owners have until late November to surrender their monkeys to the authorities. From April, anyone found raising one will face a maximum fine of nearly 8,000 US dollars. Many diseases can pass between humans and macaques, and there are concerns that raising these social animals apart from other monkeys is harmful to their well-being. Authorities will try to readapt surrendered monkeys to life in the wild. Animal rights advocates are urging owners not to abandon their monkeys. 放生等于放死了，这是第一个。然后再来就是有可能它会，呃，往人这边跑。The northern Taiwan city of Taoyuan is home to the country's largest international airport, making it the main gateway into and out of the country. It's home to the headquarters of Taiwan's two largest airlines, and there are now plans to turn the city into a genuine aerospace capital. We travel there to find out how. It's midnight at Taiwan's Taoyuan International Airport. One of the world's most modern planes, an Airbus 350 jetliner inbound from Japan, has just landed. A maintenance team takes over the long-range airliner. In the next few hours, crew members will perform checks, repairs, and adjustments to ensure the safety of the Airbus's 300 passengers. 50 kilometers south of Taipei, Taiwan's capital, Taoyuan is a city with different facets. It's the nation's fastest growing city. With an integrated transport network. Green infrastructure. And smart web solutions that make life quicker and easier for everyone here. But Taoyuan is also Taiwan's main gateway to the world. The international airport sees thousands of passengers and tons of freight pass through every day. Lin Shuhong has been maintaining aircraft for 20 years. He knows how much the industry depends on experts like him and their tradition of quality workmanship. Tonight, Lin and his team will put the Airbus 350 through what they call an A-check. Airliners undergo this critical routine every 400 to 600 flight hours. The workers have 12 hours to swarm the 66 meter long plane inside and out. Examining every nook and cranny, even in the 17 meter tail fin. Until their work is done, the plane's crew cannot take off. Every year, Nearly 250,000 aircraft fly to Taoyuan for checks, repairs, and overhauls, generating nearly $2 billion in revenue. It makes the city a leading maintenance center in Asia. Taoyuan Airport itself, generally, from the geographical standpoint, is a central and central transit point. And we also know that there are very good buses, trains, the future of Taiwan's transit system, etc. Generally, in the transit system, we can also combine the two big cities, Taiwan and Taipei, to form a combination, and even to Qilong. So, this is in the Taoyuan Airport's general development of the future of Taiwan's transit system. Taoyuan Airport is the most important 
It should be no surprise that the island has become a home to aerospace engineering expertise. Across the Pacific lies the United States, the world's largest economy. China, ranked second, is just to the west. Number three, Japan, is a hop and a skip north. And to the south are spread the 10 ASEAN nations. Together, the world's fifth largest economy. After a pandemic low, Taoyuan Airport is buzzing again. It prompts planners to begin working on an even more ambitious expansion. We're Thank you for watching Taiwan Plus News. Remember to download the Taiwan Plus app for more stories from Taiwan and around the world. Finally, as today is World Animal Day, we leave you with images of endangered species in Australia. The country's government is targeting zero new extinctions in a bid to protect endangered plants and animals. I'm Ian Kavat. Take care and see you next time.